My name is Aditya. Uh, I manage uh, pre-sales at WaveMaker. So, uh, I'll be walking you through this uh, jumpstart series of webinars. And uh, today, uh, you know, on the agenda, what we are going to cover is basically kind of give you a quick overview of WaveMaker, followed by a quick product walkthrough, uh, just to give you an idea about uh, what it entails to use the WaveMaker platform. And uh, we'll open up the floor for some Q&A. Waymaker is a low-code application development platform that is uh, purpose-built for developers. Uh, we are a platform that is built by developers for developers. Uh, what makes Waymaker quite unique uh, in the market today is that we are completely built on an open standards framework. Uh, and uh, with these open standards, it becomes very easy uh, for developers to adopt Waymaker as a platform, right? Furthermore, in terms of our uh, practice of low code itself, uh, we have taken great care to ensure that we follow all the best practices of low code that uh, uh, you know covers what you see is what you get, as well as a visual drag and drop. Right. So uh, when you're looking at WaveMaker as a low code platform, uh, we have taken great care to ensure that we have heavily leveraging a microservices based architecture that also leads you to interact with any of your existing enterprise assets, right? So this might include your various APIs that are coming from uh, external services, or it could also be your existing databases as well. Uh, so WaveMaker is designed to basically uh, ensure all teams or even larger teams can be, uh, you know, can contribute greatly with a force multiplier in terms of efficiency gains. And this basically, uh, you know, increases or rather I would say decreases your go-to-market times and you can deliver a lot more faster, right? We are cloud native from the get-go, which basically means that uh, from day one, uh, WaveMaker in itself is accessible through the browser, uh, right? Be it on our SaaS version or our on-premise version. And uh, the applications that we deliver or the applications the, uh, that you can basically deploy to end users are also completely cloud native. By sticking in the entire framework of open standards, we have also ensured that your apps are future-proof, right? So when you're looking at low code, you're actually looking at a development investment. And uh, we've taken great care to ensure that uh, with the open standard framework, as well as periodic upgrades that we offer, uh, it's very easy for you to stay up to date with your applications. So moving on to our tech stack at this point in time, uh, with WaveMaker, you can actually develop both web applications as well as mobile applications. So on the web application side, you can develop uh, responsive web apps. And for mobile, you can develop React Native mobile applications. Right. So while we are generating React Native mobile applications uh, for uh, mobile, you can also list or rather create your respective uh, apps for iOS or Android, which you can later list on the App Store or the Play Store, right? So WaveMaker has an inbuilt engine called as App Chef, uh, where we can actually, uh, you know, install the necessary certificates that are required for an iOS or uh, uh, Android build. Now, on the front end, we are using Angular, Bootstrap, HTML, and CSS. On the back end, we use Spring and Hibernate Java frameworks. Right now, uh, you can actually achieve a great deal of customization on the front end with WaveMaker. Uh, we have uh, a theme builder in place, which can act like the governing entity to kind of uh, get you towards your branding guidelines. And uh, with further customizations, your UI developers can also uh, get quite granular with the code and enhance the UI to kind of match your uh, you know, Figma designs or let's say your Zeppelin file designs, right? So whatever UI you want, you can achieve great, uh, great accuracy and detail uh, with the low-code platform. So WayMaker in itself, as I mentioned earlier, is 
uh, focused towards the developer community. We follow an open standards framework. We are also, uh, it's very easy for development teams to adopt WaveMaker and uh, coupled with the WaveMaker training, it's that much more easier for you to uh, be productive with the platform, right? Furthermore, uh, as a, you know, just slightly moving into the operation side of things, uh, we are a platform that truly has no vendor lock-in. You can literally uh, develop an application on WaveMaker and deploy it anywhere without having any hassles of any runtime dependency or hidden costs, right? So this kind of sets us apart from uh, other vendors out there. And uh, we also generate code. Right. So for each task that you perform in WaveMaker, we are generating code both on the front end and on the back end. And this code that we generate is uh, human readable. It is maintainable, extensible, and portable as well. Uh, in terms of the pricing model, uh, we follow, uh, again, a very developer-centric approach. So we charge based on the number of developer seats. And you can literally develop unlimited number of apps with your user license and unlimited number of uh, end users can access these applications free of any runtime with WaveMaker. Uh, in addition to this, uh, what I'd also uh, uh, like to uh, say is that uh, with the uh, developer licenses, you also get uh, the upgrades as well, as long as you are within that active period of uh, the license, right? Uh, so just moving on to another concept uh, in WaveMaker, which is called as prefabs. So these are something that you can think of as an advanced widget. They form uh, a Lego-like building block experience in your application development uh, process, and it completely shortens your application dev times as well. Right? Once you've built these criti critical components that are serving certain use case purposes. So a prefab is constructed using WaveMaker widgets itself but it is designed to be uh, reusable uh, as an asset within your development team, and it is also shareable, right? So you can actually keep this uh, within your development team, and it can eventually form an internal marketplace of sorts. So you can actually create, uh, you know, incredible user journeys um, with the help of prefabs, right? So it could be something like a user registration form, it could be something as interactive as uh, you know certain external charts that you have, or it could be an accounts details page or a list transactions page. So all these things would be individual elements that are falling within the bucket of various use cases, but it's completely shareable. It also works completely cross-platform across web and mobile applications. And uh, uh, you know, at the core, it's all API centric, so you can still connect and interact with your APIs. And from a theming point of view, whatever uh, uh, you know prefab that you create, it would mimic the existing theme of your application, right? So uh, it's going to be quite an interesting uh, um, experience for you as you are exploring and and start begin to work with prefabs. So this is a quick snapshot of what the architecture would look like of a standard application. So as you can see, the UI comprises of prefabs, widgets, templates, and themes. The backend is your Java APIs and uh, you know, databases. And your deployment layer is where you can literally uh, deploy your application anywhere, right? So it could be on a private cloud, public cloud, or uh, you know an orchestration layer of choice like Kubernetes or Red Hat OpenShift. So uh, it's kind of an end-to-end -end when it comes to deployment uh, of the application. So uh, WaveMaker actually sits in the development uh, phase where we can actually blend in to your existing application development practices, right? And what we have also taken great, great care of is that we have uh, given you a, a Git repository and uh, you have flexibility there as well, where you can inter integrate to your existing Git repository of choice, right? So if you've got GitLab, Bitbucket, or uh, GitHub, you can directly uh, interact with it. And uh, um, yeah, so WaveMaker would actually come in here, and whatever you're doing as part of your existing development practices, which include, let's say, testing and staging, uh, those practices would still continue but WaveMaker would come in at the development phase where we would actually help you speed up that development and uh, help you move on to the next phases before you can deploy your application. 
So just um, moving into, uh, you know, before I, I just wanted to jump a couple of slides before I go into the demo, given the time that we have. So as you can see, we are completely industry agnostic uh, as a platform. And uh, these are the, uh, you know, various industries uh, that we have focused uh, on. And uh, you can see multiple use cases, which are industry specific that is uh, displayed on your screen, uh, right? Uh, so that being said, let me move into the demo. Uh, I hope my screen is still visible. So we have a showcase uh, in WaveMaker, which basically captures certain applications uh, out of the box, uh, or rather, I would say that for anybody to try out, uh, we will provide you the link uh, on the chat for you to consume this later. And uh, we have we have multiple applications which are again industry specific. So if you see uh, under fintech, there is one particular app which is a neo banking application that uses certain BAS APIs, and you can uh, you know uh, create a specific account or user account or login, and uh, you can also uh, uh, you know make couple of transactions as well by creating a physical card, etc. We also have a telecom use case as well as a retail use case. All right, so I would urge you to go back and uh, check this uh, a little later. Uh, so now moving on to the demo itself. So WaveMaker is available to you in uh, two main editions. Uh, the version that I'm showing you right now is our SaaS offering, uh, which is on the cloud. It's hosted on our AWS. And we also have an on-premise offering, which uh, can be hosted anywhere inside your servers uh, and behind securely in, in behind the firewall, right? Uh, so this is what uh, a typical studio would look like. And I've logged into my personal account here. And you can see that these are all the various projects that I have on the screen, right? So from here, I can actually invite more people to contribute on my project. And uh, WaveMaker also has uh, this functionality called as Teams, where you can uh, you know, add developers individually to contribute uh, based on their development skill sets. So if it is more UI focused or backend focused or more of a full stack developer, you can add them and they can contribute onto your WaveMaker project uh, as you're developing them, right? So we, we basically support collaborative development uh, from the get-go. So I've just opened one of my sample applications here uh, at the moment. So uh, as you can see, this is a, a, a app that is, uh, you know, uh, one of our sample apps. And this is basically the, the central piece of the canvas. On the left-hand side, we have all the widgets that are part of our exhaustive widget library, right? Uh, individual widget properties are controlled on the right-hand side from here. And uh, you can also interact with certain backend systems such as your databases, uh, et cetera, right? So let's talk about that a little. Uh, so let's move into database first. So as you can see, uh, you know you can interact with any relational database uh, out of the box uh, with WaveMaker, right? For uh, non-relational databases, uh, we also have a connector methodology where you can interact with them, such as with MongoDB or Kafka, all right? So these are all the databases that you can interact with. You just need to uh, select the choose the database, uh, select the tables, uh, I mean the driver. Uh, and then directly import that database right in, right? So to for the purpose of the demo, I'm looking at one of my existing databases that i have currently using. And the first thing you do when you connect to a database in WaveMaker is that we give you a visual schema of that database, right? So that's what you're seeing on your screen here. In addition to this, any queries on, and stored procedures that are part of your database is also captured by WaveMaker. So this is where you would run your queries and you can also make your procedure calls from here. In addition to this, uh, we do one more step. So we auto document um, APIs in WaveMaker. So if you see in my API panel, I already have my database uh, here. And based on the table entities, we have generated all the CRUD APIs for you. So this API documentation is something the platform itself is handling in place for you, right? Uh, you can also import any uh, Swagger file or URL uh, and start working with that. If you're having any open spec Swagger uh, that you want to use as part of your application development, uh, you can do that too. I've just imported the Pet Store API uh, just to show you how that would look. 
and you can see it's a similar structure as your database, right? Uh, apart from this, when it comes to backend services, you can also connect with any third-party API. So let's say you're connecting or interacting with a CRM or uh, you know an ERP system, uh, you can actually uh, make those interactions with REST APIs, SOAP APIs, or web sockets, right? Or uh, in the previous case that I mentioned, we uh, were using VAS APIs for a neo banking application. So uh, it would uh, basically be imported from here. So you just need to choose the REST API, uh, enter the URL, define the method, uh, enter your authorization header parameters, et cetera, and uh, directly import that API service in. Uh, when it comes to business logic, uh, being a low-code platform, uh, there is still some level of uh, you know basic JavaScript, I mean, sorry, um, uh, Java code that you would need to write. So uh, that you would basically do here. You can add your Java services that you want. And uh, if you see, I have merged two APIs here, which is convert codes to sales. Uh, and uh, you can even use this as an API designer as well. Apart from that, you can also write uh, simple Java syntaxes to create a uh, specific, uh, like something like an email service, for instance, right? And even this would translate itself into consumable API. So if you look at the Java service here, uh, I have a post API and get API, and an email service is a get API with a you know, with a send email template, right? So let's move back uh, to my application right now. Uh, right? So this is my app, and uh, uh, you know this app is using a specific theme uh, that has been designed. But uh, with WaveMaker, you also have the ability to uh, you know um, kind of. Uh, bring in your own branding guidelines into WaveMaker, and that is possible using the theme builder, right? So with the WaveMaker theme builder, using just four quick steps, uh, you can define your primary colors, secondary colors, etc. You can also define your font packages, uh, your styles, whether you want a material gradient or, or a flat-based theme. And uh, you can also, at the end of the day, you will even get the code editor. So as a UI developer, uh, you know, you can appreciate that you are getting standard HTML, CSS, and less files, which you can further enhance and make changes to, and then just download this theme package, which would basically be the governing entity of your application. And that can be imported into your studio themes here, right? And that can be applied on your project. So this is currently running with the sales vision. Uh, if I were to revert to our dark theme and click on save, the application would basically uh, move to that kind of a theming. Right? So you can see it completely moves to a dark theme. So let me now just show you how you can interact with the widget in WaveMaker. So I'll just drag and drop a chart here onto the space. And you can see it's uh, already giving you a representational data of uh, what's there. Uh, I'm also going to use the properties panel to give it a name. So I'll say sales trends and uh, change the height of this to somewhere around 300, uh, sorry, 300 pixels, right? And that expands. And uh, as a bind property, what I'll also do is bind this to, uh, you know, an external service, right? So we use a concept called as variables that basically acts like the interaction between the front end and the back end. So you can use a variable that can, uh, you know, come from any of these data sources. All right, so I'm going to use sales data here, which I already have, and uh, just define that with sales. And here you can just directly uh, start binding it together, right? So you can just group it by entry date and aggregate it by the sum of uh, sales, right? So something similar that you would end up doing on Excel, uh, right? And this is what it looks like. So let me just revert back to that theme at this point. And I'll give you a quick preview of what we have built so far. And uh, I'm just previewing the app right now. So this is, again, a very useful uh, feature in WaveMaker where you can actually preview your application as you build it. And this would give you a good indication of how the app would look. So it's uh, uh, you know requesting for a security here uh, or for me to log in which gives me uh, and the opportunity to also speak about security. So as a platform, we are generating code both on the front end and on the back end. So the code that we generate is of a very high standard and code quality. So it's Veracode certified. 
and uh, in addition to that you can also define your ssl and safeguards like uh, extreme co and cores and xss uh, from an authentication point of view you can um, you know uh, also authenticate using either of the security providers like ldap active directory cas saml open id if there is some specific custom security that you have in mind you can also uh, uh, bring that custom security into wavemaker as well so for the purpose of the demo i have a database security and uh, you can see that at a page level i can uh, define authentication this is more at a macro level i can also define my app roles from here i can also define uh, you know go quite granular with the uh, authentication so let's say i want to uh, define it a little more granularly at a service level i can do that by further diving down uh, and i can authenticate it from here too right or i can do it at a prefab level so whatever prefab is in use i can authenticate that as well uh now uh, you can also do that at a widget level so this is back at the ui so if you look at let's say one of the widgets here i can go to the security and authenticate it from here right so let me just disable security for the time being just to show you a preview right and i'll just re preview this app and you can see that uh, this is uh, coming up on your screen right and the app is uh, completely responsive by design so if i were to view this on something like an iphone it would actually preview that application right let me move back to the uh, desktop view right and if you look at the my teams page uh, i have a, a, a you know my teams page here which is uh, uh going to basically show you uh, how google maps would work in wavemaker so uh, we have google maps which is basically a prefab and as i hover on the list it will actually pinpoint uh, or drop a marker based on uh, the said individual's location right so this is a quick interaction of how an external service like google map can be integrated in your um, application and this is basically a prefab that we provide out of the box you would just need to uh, enter the um, 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 you know api key and and have that uh, rendered for you in your application right so now let's also talk about the generated code so for each task that i perform there is a code that is getting generated right so this is the front end markup that we generate if you want to add more uh, styling to the page as a ui developer you are free to add over and above the theme you can actually overwrite that and uh, basically write your javascript and css styling here right and at the end of the day uh, as i said we don't have any vendor locking so you are free to export your application even during a trial so you can export your app for further development or deployment and uh, this is what you would see when you uh, export your application right so this is the file explorer and this is what your uh ex i mean exported app would look like so let me just uh, refresh this and if you see this is a generated angular app uh, if i look at the app the pages uh, right so we were working on the dashboard page so you can see that this is a generated angular application so for whatever uh, javascript that you write etc we will provide the angular code for that as a platform right so this is the standard based code that is getting generated uh, by the platform uh, the same would apply from the on the decoupled backend as well right so if you look at the backend services we were working with the database called as sales vision and uh, as i am drilling down uh, here you can see that we are generating all the pojos here right so these are the pojo files these are the uh, dao files that are getting generated Right. so it's all uh, spring and hibernate framework that you are getting and at the end of the day this is uh, uh, you know um, a maven compliant project so you can deploy it on any uh, java app server of choice or uh, 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 you know cloud provider like tomcat jboss right uh, so let me just uh, take a pause here and uh, i will open up the floor for uh, questions given that we have uh five more minutes left right let me uh, stop sharing i, I hope uh, this gives you a good understanding of the uh, you know or at least a basic walk through of wavemaker 
right? And in our next session, we'll be covering more about app development basics and how you can get started with the basic application. Yeah, so I have a question here, which basically asks me, uh, can we host WaveMaker on a private cloud? Uh, yes, so the answer to this is yes. Uh, our on-premise version of WaveMaker lets you host it on a private cloud and uh, you can basically uh, run your uh, development from there. And uh, we can, in fact, uh, do a complete uh, process where it would plug into your existing CI/CD practice as well, uh, right? Uh, another question that I have is uh, around the pricing model. Uh, so yeah, just to re-emphasize, uh, we charge based on the number of developer seats. Uh, I mean, you can basically build any number of apps and uh, any number of end users can access these applications. Uh, we do not manage the hosting with WaveMaker. So you would manage the hosting. And uh, hence, because there is no runtime dependency or hidden costs, you have complete flexibility to manage the traffic that you're expecting uh, on your uh, specific app. Yeah, I can see one more question uh, that's, uh, that's here. Yeah, so uh, it, this is more of a comparison-based question that I'm uh, getting. So uh, in terms of the advantages that you would see with WaveMaker is uh, the open standards-based uh, code that we generate. This uh, is advantageous to any developer because one, you know what is what exactly is happening behind the scenes. And two, you can further customize it to a greater level of detail, right? And the third advantage is the flexibility that we offer, right? So we are not locking you in, uh, in any way. Uh, we are giving you the code and we are also giving you the freedom to deploy your apps uh, wherever you would like, right? So at the end of the day, uh, you have complete control of your application as well as the IP as well. I hope that's answered your question. So uh, I think we are almost at the end of time uh, at this point. Um, I would really uh, thank the viewers for tuning in today. Uh, our next uh, webinar is more on the step-by-step -step series of uh, uh, you know, application building. So I would request you to please sign up for that and tune in. Uh, it it's going to be quite an interactive, I mean, quite an exciting session for everyone to learn. Right. So thank you for tuning in. Uh, uh, hope to see you all soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.